Okay, so if let's say you want to know more about springs, there's a simulation linked below. You want to click the third tab, which is the energy one. Uh, I think I can, yeah. So you'll see the screen. Click the one on energy if you want to know more. Don't worry about the rest. Those are in later in A2 chapters and a little bit in chapter 9. But for the energy part, let's do this one. You can hang a mass. Okay, see on the left, there's so many graphs there. Oh my goodness. Zoom in a bit more. So there's a lot of stuff going on. Let's turn off gravity if we don't want to think about gravitational potential energy. Let's also turn off damping because damping is something to do with friction. Okay, so your spring will eventually lose energy. So let's let's turn off damping for now because we only want to look at how kinetic and potential changes. So here, if I displace a spring and I let it go, whine. Oh my goodness, that is way too fast to see anything. Let's slow it down a little bit. Okay, so where is the equilibrium point? There is the equilibrium point. And there is the displacement from the natural length. Okay, so this is originally where the spring will be resting if I didn't displace it. But now, I want you to go try out this, uh, this, this simulation. See where is kinetic energy the maximum? Where is this little this mass moving the fastest? And where is potential energy the highest? So you can look at the left and then look at the right and try to piece together. So this is where it will be in equilibrium. Notice how when the mass passes this line, that's when kinetic energy is the highest. You can go try this out also. And where is potential energy the max? When it's right at the bottom, right at the top. Okay, so that's the main thing to look at for look out for this uh, energy thing, how it's interchangeable. If you want to go ahead and open up gravity as well, ooh, then yeah, you will have more things to look at later. So anyway, this was the simulation to look at for spring energy. And before I end this video, I want to show you in case you still don't know paper SC or don't know how to use it. Uh, if you already know, you can skip this part. But paper SC is the best. Uh, pass your website at the moment. So all you need to go do, you can use it on the phone or computer. Go to paperSC.com. Make this bigger a bit. PaperSC.com and you will see this empty page. Now you may be very, very confused like, what do I do here? Well, uh, we want to find physics paper. So you need to know the physics paper code. So for physics, it's 9702. So you're just going to type that there. And you will come to the physics homepage. Now here you're like, wow, what is all these symbols? So um, for February and March exams, uh, FM, usually you will see it in the handout, FM. You, you want to use M19, M for March. May, June is summer, so S. October, November is winter, so W. And specimen paper, don't worry about that one. So let's say I want to find, um, what's the example? October, November 2014, paper 1-1. One, one. So I can do this. October, November is winter 2014. Okay, and then wow, I have all the papers for that year, but I only want paper one. So I do P1. And I only want variation one, so I click on this one. So the best thing about this site is that you don't have to download PDFs like other Cam Papa Cambridge other. You just view it in your browser and jump from question to question. Ooh, very easy. See on the left side, you can jump from variant to variant. So let's say this is um, question 16. So you just scroll down to question 16. Where is question 16? There we go. Okay, let's say we have question 16 here. This is the one where you want to solve. So you look at the question, you do do do, then you think, okay, I want to check the answer. So you see this pink color thing, it's a hyperlink. You can click on that and you see straight away the answer is A. Ta-da! Done. But what makes this great is you can also see the examiner report, the ER, which is the most important thing you will want to do as you go through these questions by yourself. So you click on ER, what is that? It's examiner report. And it's very helpful because they'll tell you things like this. Candidates found this question difficult, blah, 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 at the highest point. So they'll tell you common mistakes students make, or they'll tell you, oh, most people got this wrong. Then you know, oh man, you gotta be very careful with this type of stuff. So whenever you see an ER next to the question, absolutely go and read it because they will tell you misconceptions and problems that students usually make. 
Now, how about paper two? This is for paper one. What if I want to go find that spring question I talked about? It's a February, March paper. So I say March, set 2017. Then I will see all the paper one, two, three, four, five, but I only want paper two. So I can already click here, or if you want to filter out even more, paper two. Then I'll scroll to that question, the spring question. Where is it? This one. Okay, so let's say you come to this question, everything is empty. Try out your the working on a, a piece of paper first. Then what you can do is you click this pink hyperlink and you jump to the MS, which is the mark scheme. Click that. And it will show you the mark scheme straight away. Wow, very nice. Uh, basically on the right, if you look, if you see M1, that's what we call a method mark. Means uh, your, your answer may not be correct, but you would still get that mark if you did your working on the paper. A1 here means accuracy mark, means your answer have to be correct. You have to follow, uh, you have to follow the, 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 the mark scheme exactly. Now, if you notice here, there's some words underlined. That means your answer must have these words in your definition. Total momentum, very important. You must have the word total or sum. Now, if you notice the extra, the other one is C1. What is C1? C1 is more related to your equation that you use. You may not show the equation explicitly, but if it's implied, you have your working shown like number multiplied by number and it's a correct equation, you still get your C1 mark. Convenient thing is, here, as you do, 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 and you, and you want to check the examiner report, you can do that too. You click that, QP is question paper, you don't want to go back to that. ER is the error report, also in this tab, you'll jump straight to the error, uh, sorry, error report, examiner report for this question. So they'll tell you things like this. Look at that. Most answers refer to the total expense, uh, total, Momentum, uh oh, but in some answers, total was omitted, which suggests momentum only on one body. So, a lot of, uh, in some students, they say they didn't write the word total momentum, so they lost that point. And okay, yeah, so they'll say this answer, this question, very well answered, so they consider easy. Some people did this, some people did that. Sometimes they'll tell you, students with good work will do this first. Oh, this one, most answers were partially correct, so most people got this wrong. Better candidates were able to clearly show steps. So if you want to be a better performing candidate, you must follow the advice of this examiner report. And, you know, keep an eye on what people usually do wrong and make sure you don't do wrong as well. So that's the amazing part of paper.sc. Everything in one. Question paper, mark scheme, error report. GT, if you want to check that, that's a great threshold for this exam, but no need to worry about that yet. Okay, so... If you don't know Paper SC yet, please go and try it out. It's great. A very good resource, free at the moment still. And use this to solve your questions in case you don't have a printed pass here, a stack of pass here or things like that. Okay, so that's all for this short video. Go and try out some of these Paper 2 questions and discuss with your friends about elastic potential energy.